In this video, I'm going to show you how you can design floor plans with Forma Floor Plan Sketcher. There are different ways of designing floor plans, and we will start with basic buildings. Here is my Forma project proposal I want to work with. We have three basic buildings here. Two of them have the same footprint I mentioned, and one of them has a smaller footprint and more stories. And this is the one I want to start with. To draw floor plans, you want to select the building you want, and then go here to where it says floor plan. And if you click it, you enter the floor plan sketcher. On the top right corner, you can see different tools such as draw a line to draw walls, draw a rectangle to draw a rectangle of walls. And then you have here another set of tools such as measurements, where you can turn on and off the rulers choose between seeing the measurements in lengths or area numbers. You also have the option to have a grid and you can choose the size of this grid. In this case, I want to have a 50 by 50 centimeters grid. You can set the orientation of your grid and camera in case, for example, your building shape is not perpendicular. And then you can also adjust how accurate you want your snapping to be. To start, I'm going to click on the draw line tool and I'm going to draw walls inside my plan. I would like to have two apartment units with a core in the middle. Each line I draw represents the center of a wall and the grid really helps me to have a notion of the dimensions of the rooms I am drawing. I'm going to draw a four by four meters core. I have this wall here that I do not want, so I can just click it and delete. I can also adjust the position of the corners and the shape of the room by clicking and dragging these little circles here. As you can see, I have now drawn three rooms and I can give each room a unit type. This one will be a unit because I want it to be an apartment. This one is also a unit. And then in the middle, we have the core where stairs, elevators, and access to departments will be located. Something else you can do is to give each unit a function. By clicking a unit and going here to function, I can choose between residential, commercial, or unspecified. I'm going to set my two apartments as residential units. If you click the eye icon here in the bottom right corner of your plan view, you have some display settings where you can change the colors of your units depending on function, type or area. Here on the left side in stories, you can see all the plans of your building. Because all the stories are selected, as you can see marked in blue, all your plans got the same floor plan design you just drew. I don't want the first plan to have the same floor plan design as the others. So I am going to draw a corridor here and I'm going to give this a unit type corridor. Since this is the first floor, I'm going to change these two units uh, next to the corridor so that the function is commercial. And if we now go back to our proposal, you can see that the functions that we just chose are shown with colors. The residential units are in yellow and the commercial units are in purple. If we go back to our floor plan sketcher, you can see here on the right side a place called templates, where I already have two other different floor plans saved from before. You can save all the plans you draw in the library and use them later on, either to test different plan alternatives or save as a typical plan solution to use in other buildings. To save the two types of floor plans I just drew, I need to go here to the little three dots and click it and add to library. As you can see, I now have the floor plan saved to my templates. Let's go back to our proposal. This tower has now floor plans but these two do not. I'm going to go into the plan sketcher for this one. You can see that these do not have the same footprint size as the tower. However, I would like to have a similar floor plan as I drew in the tower. So I'm going to use one of my saved templates and adapted it to this footprint. 
Let's see our template tools. We have fill inside, which if you place it inside your new plan, it will adapt to its dimensions. As you can see, the two apartments just got bigger. By choosing the stamp inside tool, if you place it partially outside your plan, only the part inside the plan will be visible. You can see the outer part is now cut to where the building exterior walls are and a third apartment is created at the bottom. And if you choose the stamp tool, and I will place it in the same way as I did the one before, partially outside, then the template plan keeps its shape and the building gets extended to the outside, as you can see here in 3D. And that is how you can easily use the plan templates you have saved in other buildings. I could do the same for this building and so on. You also have the possibility to work with line buildings, which you do by going to buildings and choose line buildings. I'm going to draw a line building right here, 60 meters long. Here in the bottom right side, I can adjust the dimensions of this building and I am choosing to divide it into sections of 60 meters. So here in the 3D, you can see we have three sections of 60 meters. The end one is a bit smaller because I didn't extend the building long enough, but that's okay. To draw floor plans in line buildings, you have two different options. You can have circulation, which if you click it, it will give you automatically a corridor through the building. And if you click here, you can choose the corridor alignment. If it's in the middle or in one of the facades, you can also adjust the corridor width. So this is one way of experimenting with floor plans in a line building in a more simple and automated way. But let's go back. If instead of circulation you choose floor plans, then you can see in this window that just popped up that you get two types of floor plans. One which is 12 by 16, which is the three equal sections marked in blue. Or you have the 12 by 12, which is the smaller section at the end now marked in blue. I want to draw a floor plan for the 12 by 16 meters section. So I'm going to click add new. And as you might recognize, we are back at the floor plan sketcher and we can either draw a new plan or use a template, which is exactly what I'm going to do. If I go back to my proposal, I can see that all three sections got the same floor plan in all stories. If you want to have a longer building with more 12 by 16 meter sections, all you have to do is drag back this little circle at the end and when you drag it again to extend the building, it will create more sections with equal size and equal floor plans. If we want to have one of these sections with a different floor plan than the others, select just one single section, add a new floor plan. Let's say this one will have a core against the facade. And as you can see, only the one we selected has changed to this other floor plan. If you click on these options, you can play with the position of the core. It will mirror it to the opposite side of the facade, for example. If I want to divide this line building so it is four separate buildings, you can also do that by coming to this button in the bottom right corner and choosing Release to Basic Building. So if I do this and then I try to select the building, you can see that I now have four separate basic buildings. And this allows me to, for example, make this one a different height than the others and play a bit more with the volume. So now we have designed floor plans for basic buildings and line buildings. Something very handy you get from doing this is if you click the building you want, you will not only get the area metrics and number of units of your building, but if you choose instead of buildings units here, you will also get the unit distribution of your floor plans with the different unit sizes. Another situation where you can design floor plans is when you are working in Explore. I will click on my plot 
and you see I get different building placement options. I am going to go for this one. So I can go inside the floor plan sketcher as we did before. Here I can also see the other buildings that are in my proposal and I can choose which one I want to work with. I can also use the draw line to edit the size of the building by simply selecting the line and moving it. You can easily see the changes in the 3D as well. I can give these buildings a floor plan as we did before and just keep working on all the buildings on my proposal always inside the floor plan sketcher. I want to show you how you can save floor plan templates to a hub so you can use it in a different form of project or share it with your colleagues for them to use in their own projects. If you come here to your library you can see the plans you have saved in this project. By clicking the three dots and choosing share to the hub library, you are adding them to your hub. Then if you change it from project to hub like this, you can see that the floor plan template was added to the hub where everyone that has access to this hub can use this template in their projects. I want to show you how this floor plan looks like in Revit after you have sent your former project to Revit. As you can see in former floor plan sketcher, both exterior and interior walls are represented by lines. The line represents the center of the wall. This is the same project but in Revit. We have here our proposal which has walls, the green slabs are basic roofs, it has the surrounding buildings, and the 3D terrain. Now, if we go to a plan view, for example, level nine, you can see how floor plan sketcher translates into Revit. Our walls now have a thickness. The exterior walls are 40 centimeters and the interior walls are 22 centimeters. We also got a grid automatically from Forma and we got rooms from the units we created in Forma. If now I look at this floor plan in 3D, you can see that it also has floors and that is basically how it looks like in Revit. That is how by using the floor plan sketcher in Forma, we get a great starting point and base to keep improving our project further on.